From New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Kelly Rip is here, helping win cash for Wendy watchers. She's playing Wendy in a game of Ripa or Stripa. And the judges from the new hit show Hot Bench are here. Plus, have Beyonce's plans for a second secret album been leaked? Wendy's got the story. Now, here's Wendy. What did you watch on TV last night? Me, I watched the inside of my eyelids. <laughs> uh, but Dancing with the Stars was on. And look, do you remember, like, when I was growing up in New Jersey, there were a lot of cult movies, and Cheech and Chong were right up there with them. You know, Nice Dreams and all those movies. Anyway, Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong is 76 years old, and he's still in the competition. I think he looks terrific. I, I think he looks terrific. Uh, you know, he's notoriously known, he and Chong for, uh, Cheech, for, you know, smoking weed <laughs> at nauseum. But Tommy is the oldest dancer who's gone on this long on Dancing with the Stars. So, congratulations to you, Tommy Chong. And, and his daughter, Ray Dong Chong, was in the audience. She, you know Ray Dong. Yeah, that's his daughter, sure. She's 53. Anyway, um, Alphonse Ribeiro, everybody, had a scary moment last night. Well, he got tangled up in a zip line. Well, not tangled, but stuck. And he had no harnesses to help him hold. And he was off the ground to a point where if he dropped himself, he would have broken something. I have the footage. Let's watch together. Came off the rail. Hey guys, this is so scary. Tell me to stable. Don't let go. Let me take off this one first. There you go. What if you have gotten weak and dropped yourself? Like, like, would you have been able to hold on that long? No. That is crazy. My husband's got this harebrained scheme where when we go out to Vegas this weekend, uh, we're gonna take our whole squad and me and him and stuff on the zip damn line. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I like my feet firmly planted on the ground. I don't need to do stunts and I don't need, no. Anyway, so did he end up zip lining on the actual show? I told you I was sleeping, he did, and it went off without a hitch? Without a hitch. Oh. Very nice. He's, go he's going to win. Dancing with the Stars airs Monday nights at 8 o'clock on ABC. Now, this Taylor Swift. First of all, first of all, I always tell you I'm a woman and I'm allowed to change my mind. You need to exercise your mind changing too sometimes, you all. You don't always have, just because you like somebody doesn't mean you always have to agree with them. So be very clear, I am hating on Taylor Swift right now. <laughs> I know that her album will sell well, and her music makes me dance, and that Shake It Off is constantly playing in my head. I think she's adorable. I love her cat Meredith, the whole bit. But what I don't like is that you are now the global ambassador for New York City, or the state as a whole, 
the, as a whole. You got a song on your album called Welcome to New York, for which I know you're donating the proceeds to New York City schools. Bula, bula, bula. How about, <laughs> how about bringing your tall, lanky self to New York and performing on a damn stage, Taylor? <laughs> I'm very, very upset with this. You wanna know why? Because, like I told you, she's only lived in this city for six months. She's from Tennessee, born in Pennsylvania. What makes her know anything about being any type of representative of New York when there are people like Sarah Jessica Parker? Yeah. You know? I mean, and Sarah Jessica's just one person. Heck, Ripa's coming out here. Ripa is, that's a good ambassador. So now Taylor is about to embark on her tour. And she's kicking it off in Kentucky? Bossier City, Bossier City Louisiana. Kentucky. Huh? Louisiana. Louisiana. And she's going to a bunch of different places in between, including up to Canada, Fargo, North Dakota. Guess where she's not going to be performing? New York! New York! <laughs> look, look, and because she's such an outsider, she is performing in New Jersey. I guess she thinks New York, New Jersey, same thing. No, well, not the same thing. There's no public transportation to get New Yorkers over to East, East Rutherford. <laughs> East Rutherford is just around the corner. It's right out, you, you get there in 15 minutes, but that's not the point. That's East Rutherford, New Jersey. You're not the global ambassador of Jersey. You're the global ambassador of New York. I would suggest that you get on your team and you make room for New York. And it's horrible that we have to beg you to do it. But if you're gonna be a global ambassador, you've got to come, go to the Barclay out in uh, Brooklyn. Perform at Madison Square Garden. But do something. I'm just very mad, you know? That, that, that makes me angry. Um, clap if you don't mind that she's not coming to New York. Uh, go ahead, you don't mind. Or maybe because you're not from here. Or, oh, see? <laughs> Selfish. <laughs> or maybe you are not buying tickets for her, her concert, but you can't deny that the music's good, right? Just a little tough love, uh, Taylor. Get it together. <laughs> Chris Jenner is still with that man. Yes. <laughs> and apparently um, they went on a vacation together to Mexico, to Joe Francis's house. <laughs> Extra chlorine in that pool. <laughs> so, so there's Chris. And, you know, he's 40. Chris turns 59 tomorrow. Aww. By the way, if you like her sneakers, they're Nikes, but they're a special edition Ricardo Tucci, you know, K Kanye's special friend. <laughs> yeah, for, for Givenchy. For Givon yeah, that's him, for Givenchy. Look, at North is pissed. What is she, <laughs> the whole family's pissed. And uh, put that back. Why is Kanye looking at him like that? <laughs> Anyway, the point is, is that um, they have this picture of them holding hands. Can we get to the picture of them? It doesn't it look like Chris knows the photographers are there and she brought his hand around and manipulated it. See, in my mind, as soon as you get with Chris, she manipulates everything. She says when you're gonna have the sex, where you're gonna go for food, you know, and the whole bit. Um, and this guy is just, doesn't he have a big donk? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sweet. Um, anyway, um, to me, Chris manipulates everything. This is not a relationship that she's so into. She just wants us to talk, and it's working. We're talking. She'll get rid of him and move on to the next one. As a matter of fact, Chris, I still want you to have that dating show. Now, we talked about this last week. I was reading in the magazines that, you're, that you've been fishing around for a dating show. I think that this is a smart move because I don't know about you guys. Like, I don't watch the, the takes Long Island and the actual Kardashian shows or anything like that, but I would watch Chris, you know, as a, a woman who's contemporary to me, you know, with a youthful spirit. I would watch her date, but I, I don't want this guy on the show. I don't, I don't want this guy on the show, but I, I want to see, like, if they film eight episodes, like I was telling you, I want eight different types of people. I want, I want black, and I want Hispanic, and I want young, like 25, and I want older, like 75. You know, <laughs> o older but hot. You know, you know, I'm not talking about old with a pot belly and no dough. 
Like, you know, I, I would watch the uh, Chris Dates the World show. I would. <laughs> and, and Chloe put on um, social media that she likes her mom's new man. So, you know, oh God. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. All right, let's move along. Guess who Miley Cyrus has been messing around with? Ooh. Patrick Schwarzenegger. <laughs> now, hold on now. First of all, have you ever seen Patrick Schwarzenegger? Whew. I mean... And he's got a, she's got a type, because doesn't he, if you squint, look a little bit like Liam, her former fiancé? Well, she says she's finished with bad boys, she's over that, and now she wants somebody nice and, nice and normal. And so I guess that would be Schwarzenegger. Anyway, they've been going about town, and recently they were spotted. Um, he opened the door to let her out of his apartment, and there she is leaving. Uh-huh. And as you can see, the sun is up, so it's probably morning. <laughs> she's doing the walk of shame to her car. <laughs> so... Miley's parents love this idea, you know, because he's, a, I guess, a Schwarzenegger Kennedy. Who wouldn't? Uh, but Arnold and Maria, Patrick's parents, do not like that um, he's mixing up with Miley. He doesn't want... They don't want her, him to head down the wrong path and get into this Hollywood scene. I have news for Arnold and Maria. When you look like this and you're a Schwarzenegger Kennedy, you don't need Miley Cyrus to send you down a bad road. This boy has probably been down a bad road for years. <laughs> you know? I think that they're naive to think that Miley would be the source of problems for him, you know? I mean, Miley seems to play the Hollywood scene when she's out of the house. Do you know what I'm saying? But in the house, like, you ever see pictures inside her house? She's, like, got the crafting room and, you know, big screen TV and lots of couches. And she likes to watch TV. She has a chef that makes, you know, her snacks and stuff. And she doesn't have a lot of people over at her house. I don't know. I think that the Miley g gimmick is just that, a gimmick. Uh, but when she goes home and takes off her wig and takes her bra off, I think that she's just plain old Miley, like the rest of us. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, there are a handful of um, stars in Hollywood who still do their own stunts. Um, at all costs, they do. And Tom Cruise has been legendary for always doing his own stunts. This time, I think he's gone too far. Maybe it's just because I'm scared of heights. My heart is quickening as I tell you the story. I can't... He shot a scene for the new Mission Impossible. He's strapped to the outside of an airplane. He wore a harness, but so what? Look how high off the ground he is. Wait, show the big picture. Show, show the big... No. Yeah, show the picture. Show, show everybody. Look how far off the ground he is. I mean, he goes... I love Tom Cruise. You know, I, I hate that sometimes, you know, there are people, you know, that I love, and sometimes I have to talk greasy about them, but that's what I do. <laughs> but I... I <laughs> <laughs> I think that Tom Cruise is so damn handsome. And I've never met him. I understand he's a little man who allegedly wears lifts in all of his shoes. Doesn't matter. He, you know... He's very, very handsome. He represents my age group very well as far as those looks, right? He's got all that good cruise hair. I mean, except for a couple of hiccups in his life, you know, the alleged interviews to find Sari. I mean, Sari's mother. You know, the Scientology and, you know, Nicole Kidman and stuff. But if you overlook those things, <laughs> he really is... Don't you find him very handsome? He and Nicole never had children, biological children, but they adopted a, a little girl and, who's now grown. She lives in West Hollywood. Um, anyway, a little girl, and then the black son, who, if you, look at, if you look at Tom's son sometimes, like when they're together at the basketball games and stuff, the paparazzi takes the picture, the son looks like the father. It, it's, the, it's the most, it's like weird. God, he's, look, look, those are the Kidman years. Still handsome. <laughs> handsome. What is that on her arm? She's, she's looking for a way out. Look how she's... He's looking one way and she's looking for the other. Anyway, um, I love you, Tom Cruise.
When I first heard that Stevie Wonder's girlfriend was pregnant with triplets, I was like, wow. I mean, we haven't heard about triplets since in years, right? It's usually twins or a single, but triplets, interesting. He's 64 years old. That's his girlfriend, she's 40. Now he's got um, eight children already with five babies mothers. <laughs> The kids range in age from one to 39. So the oldest is only a year younger than his soon to be wife. She, yeah, they're gonna, they say they're gonna get married. In the meantime, Stevie, who's 64 and doesn't look blind right there, doesn't it look like he's looking right at us? Look, and look at the way they're holding hands. Isn't she supposed to lead him? But he's walking confident. He's walking better than I do. He's pulling her hand and pulling her along. And I don't think he has the, the, the cane in the other hand. He's just walking. It's amazing. Uh, so now, um, this will be um, babies number nine, 10, and 11. He says that uh, he plans on being a better father this time around because, you know, I guess back in the day, you know, he's busy on the road and, you know, the music, the music, the music. And now at 64 years old, he's settled down. A lot of my producers and, and um, people around here at the Wendy Show were judging, saying, what is a 64-year-old man doing having, you know, baby? You know, he's only going to be able to be alive for a small portion of their life. I said, well, a young father can walk outside and get hit by the subway. So, so what are we talking about here? And... Stevie still has his money. They say he's worth $110 million. Whoa. And, and, I, I'm, I'm glad for him. I mean, you know, it's not for your average 64-year-old living in Jersey, you know, to have kid number 9, 10, 11 with six, ba ba six babies' mothers. <laughs> but I think the difference between Stevie and you is that Stevie's got the money to back all this up, you know? Um... That's the one good thing, I guess, about money. You know who, if I were um, the kids, though, I'd be pissed. Like, if I was a 39-year-old, I'd be like, no, wait a minute. No, what, what? It was supposed to be my inheritance. <laughs> then, you, then you went on, no, no, I would get selfish like that. You're damn right. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, hold on. And for every child that Stevie has, I'm looking at my inheritance dwindle down to nothing. And now you're gonna have triplets and marry the baby's mother, which means that she's priority dough-wise over the kids? Are you serious? What is the point in being a wonder if you can't be wonderful? I'm just, I'm just saying. So Beyonce, Beyonce was trying to um, trick us again. Well. She was trying to, I guess, surprise us with another one of those albums. Not the one that she's making with her husband, but a Beyonce album. But somebody in her camp leaked the memo on social media. Ooh. See, there's all the details. All, heads will roll, heads will roll. The memo claims that um, the, the deluxe album will drop next Friday. It's gonna have all the old music from her, from her past album and then a couple of new songs and some remixes. I think like Justin Timberlake's gonna be on the album and you know, some other people. So in other words, for those of you, yeah, Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, they're all gonna be on the album. So for those of you. <laughs> but for those of you who bought the album that she downloaded that just came out, you know, that surprise album. So now, are you really that invested in Beyonce? You have that much money, you're gonna buy another? Okay, all right, just asking. J just, just asking. <laughs> Calm down, Beehive. <laughs> anyway, um, Brendan, what are you doing? Is that it? Why are you waving at me? <laughs> oh, well, where's your sign that says 30 seconds? Okay. <laughs> I need my old floor manager, Doug. Doug, please come back from the Country Music Awards. <laughs> no, Brendan, you had, oh, Bre oh, Brendan, oh. <laughs> well, that's it for Hot Topics. But we've got more great show for you. The judges from the new hit court show called Hot Venture here. But up next, America's sweetheart, the fabulous Kelly Ripa joins us. <laughs> We're playing Celebrity November games all week long. This time, Nisi.
I'll be the do A live performance from the new show, Fix My Choir. We're taking you to church. Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. First guest as co-host of Live with Kelly and Michael. Please welcome America's sweetheart, Kelly Ripa. Tiny for a Wendy, but oh not for a God. Ripper. <laughs> Listen, when I watch you, I notice that you, because of your size, they can put you in anything, and you look fantastic. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Well, I think that I, thank you. I, I always say that I'm like a girl, bo I'm like a boy girl. So they can, for our Halloween show, say they can, I, they can transition me into yes. a boy very easily. Yeah, and you don't have to wear the big bras. I mean, this is my big bra. Yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Um, Thanks for noticing. This is my big padded bra. Oh, is Thank it? Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, what are you, concave? <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've got it opposite is, problems. It's so, uh, you know what, though? I'm so jealous. And your problem is a better problem to have. These are I implants. Yeah, well, guess what? All, more power to you. <laughs> They're perfect. Look, put your feet right there on the shoes, and we're yeah. going to give you shoe cam. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Notice that your feet are dangling? Like you had to sit on the edge of the couch. I to know. Put them no, I know. Oh. Um, no, but see, my feet are a mess because we did this thing for what our show. What is that show. black thing on your pinky those, toe? Those are those are scabs from our ballet number that we did for our Shake It Off Taylor Swift I, video. Okay, okay, because yeah. your show comes on before ours, so I'm able to watch your yes, show. Yes, right. I like the Taylor Swift Shake It Off video. Thank you. Was that Did Lola's I... idea? No, no. Um, it was, not, it was not Lola's idea. It was actually Lola's biggest embarrassment. I think she wanted to switch schools after that. Yeah, because she's 13 yeah. now. She's 13, uh -huh. and her worst nightmare is um, me doing it, Taylor Swift, anything. Is she over you being on TV? Yeah, well, she doesn't watch my show. She watches your show, and she loves your show. Well, wait, she's um, supposed to be in school. She um, she watches everything online. Oh. Everything is online. Oh. Um, but she recently lost her com uh, computer and phone privileges, so it's like taking well, away oxygen. Okay, your husband was here last week. Yeah. He didn't say exactly what she did. Is it something embarrassing that we can't talk about? Um, it's not embarrassing. It's just um, not following the rules. She broke the rules, and we are, like, all about... We are very fair parents, yes. and we will give you certain freedoms mm -hmm. but when you want privacy and a not private world like you can't have privacy and be on instagram uh -huh. i'm sorry that's not how it works privacy is for if you want to write a letter or write in your journal i'm not going to read that but if you right. want to if you want to tweet about what a pain in the butt your mom is so what I'm are we talking about that. did she post something bad on instagram no she didn't post anything bad she just was using she was texting when she was supposed to be studying for spanish uh -huh. and so that that got everything to Now, how did you know she was texting? You just walked in her room and saw her, or you said, give me your phone, let um, me look? I walked into her room, and she wasn't there. And I... S <laughs> and so... And, but there was her phone, which isn't supposed to be in her room oh. during study mm -hmm. hours. So I was like, let me just accidentally dial in her code. Does she know you know her code? She does know I know her okay. code. She mm -hmm. knows I know her code, but she doesn't think that I would ever abuse that okay. privilege. Which I just, because I saw a lot of things like so-and-so responded to your Instagram or so-and-so liked your photo. So where was she, in the bathroom or she something? She was in the bathroom, uh -huh. showering. Which oh, I don't she, think she'll ever do that again. Okay. She'll never shower again. Yeah. Not she, while we're awake. Yeah. All right, so you saw that she was uh, texting during she homework was, yeah. time. And, and, so, and so I just said, you know... This t this is a Spanish test. It matters. It's not her strongest subject, and does and that help out, Consuelo? Said yeah, I'm like, that's what I said. I'm like, you're half Mexican. Your grandmother is a Spanish teacher. You're not allowed to fail Spanish. Yes. it's the one thing you're not allowed. To so fail. now look, because we have a 14 year old, and he doesn't much like me anymore. Does she like you? Um, no, I don't think she likes me, but yeah. I don't care. I'm yeah. like, I'm not your friend. Yeah, I'm, I'm your not mom. your friend. I'm not okay. your friend. Okay. <clears throat> Do you feel a special obligation because you are Kelly Ripa and you you are America's sweetheart? No, I don't feel... I, no, no, no. 
Uh, first of all, that is... To the rest of the world. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what you do behind closed doors, you know, we've, we've that all... That is not true. But you know what I I'm saying. I just feel like an obligation as her mom to uh, keep her living in the real world. Like, you... Live in the real world. I don't care. I don't care who you are or what you do. If you're a mom, you're a mom. Yes. Like, it's just the way it is. Yep. I don't care. Like, everybody's a mom. Like, yep. Beyonce's a mom. You're a mom. I'm a mom. Uh, do you like the way I just lumped myself into that group? <laughs> when Mark was here, he wanted me to ask you what he does to annoy you. He told me to ask you that. Wait, no, how many seconds do we have left? <laughs> I just want to make sure I don't cut in on the rest of the show. Yes. Um, I would say, I would say the fact that he cannot stay awake um, for anything for longer than four minutes. And, right, and he tells me four minutes is all it really takes. So but still. <laughs> I... So, like, when you guys, when you guys go to Broadway. Yeah, no, oh, he's, oh. He goes to sleep. No, we go to a Broadway show, and he is asleep. He's not just asleep. He is asleep. See, that? that's a picture of him right before he fell right asleep. Right before he fell asleep. Right before, <laughs> right before he goes to completely asleep in my lap. But he'll fall asleep. Um, like, he'll say, do you mind if I watch the Giants game? And I go, no, of course not. And he puts it on. Uh-huh. And he immediately falls asleep, clutching the remote. Clutching the remote. Clutching the remote. So I want to watch Real Housewives, and right. I try to, like... Don't you miss that show? Oh, God. Wait, no, Real Housewives. I was thinking of Desperate Housewives. Oh, well, I also miss Desperate Housewives. Yes. Anything with the word Housewives, housewives. In it, I'm on board. Now they're telling us we have to go to the commercial. Oh, but my up God. next, everybody, we're going to give away some cold, hard cash. We're going to play a game with Kelly called Ripper or Stripper. Yes. Keep it here. Long and today we're giving cold hard cash in a game of Ripper or Stripper. I love it. All right. Here's how we play. I'm gonna ask Kelly and our audience member Bianca, Bianca. some hot topic questions. And for everyone they get right, our stripper Tony, who by the way is from Queens, but I could have also guessed Brooklyn, Jersey, or Staten Island. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? Uh, um, anyway, he's going to take off a piece of clothing and reveal a cash amount that Bianca will win. So the money is on Tony. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's yes. get started. You guys ready for your first question? We are yes. ready. Okay. Which talk show host will be starring as a male stripper in the Magic Mike sequel? Is it A, Steve Harvey, B, Michael Strahan, or C, Dr. Phil? I know this one oh, for yeah. sure. sure? Okay, it good. is Michael Strahan, final answer. Yes! You've got to remove something. Ooh. Shake something. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, get the music. Yeah. hundred dollars. Okay. Here's our next question. Pants, um, which pants. show star is joining the cast of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Oh, is it Lisa Renna, Deidre Hall, or Susan Lucci? I think it's Lisa Renna. Lisa Renna. Lisa Renna. By the way, I think, Kelly, I, I like Lisa Renna. I think it's the worst decision she could ever make. I can't, I don't, uh, listen. <laughs> She's gonna be amazing on it. Oh, okay. She's, oh, she's hit the music. Amazing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Take something off, Tony. Which celebrity has a, was a stripper before making her big break? Was it Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, or Rihanna? I had no idea about any of them. Please don't help. Um, okay. okay. We're going to say Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. You're Gaga. correct. Yeah. Get to feeling. Hit the music. Oh, my God. Um, Thank God for us weeklies. <laughs> that information 
Bible. It tells us everything. <laughs> Tony, are you a stripper in real life? Actually, I am, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, That's why you're so comfortable. Yes. <laughs> All right, here's your fourth question. Kelly recently joined Instagram. Which celebrity has the most Instagram followers, though? Is it Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, or Beyonce? It's gotta be Taylor Swift. It has to be Taylor. Has to be T.S., Taylor Swift. Wrong! <laughs> Justin Bieber has 22.5 million. Oh. Well, so, Tony, you don't have to take anything off this I'm time. I'm a loser. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. It's okay, no, because Bianca could have helped. <laughs> no, Bianca. <laughs> Don't worry, Kelly. All right, here's your final question. And you should know the answer to this because you read Us Weekly. I do. <laughs> Kelly and Michael dressed as Kim Ye for Halloween. But the question is, how many days has Kim Ye actually been married to Kanye? Uh, 72 days, 125 days, or 164 days? 72, 125, or 164? Um, I'm going to go with 164. Yes! And you won't believe how Kristen Johnston plays it. Yeah! Plus, redo your do. Take your hair from busted to beautiful. Thursday on an all-new Wendy. This November, it's November here at Wendy. We're making it rain all month long. And you at home can cash in. Cha-ching! Log on to my Facebook page and sign up for your chance to win. Watch us here every weekday. And if we announce your name, you could win cold hard cash. Get in on the November rain today. at NJ Pack in Newark, New Jersey. It's comedy in Jersey on November 15th. I'm performing with Lunell and many others. Go to wendyshow.com and click How You Laughing to get your tickets. Thank you. Now it's time for Ask Wendy. Come on. How are you, young lady? Hi, Wendy. Hi. My name is Tiffany. How you doing? How you doing, Tiffany? About three months ago, I was at a bachelorette party, and I noticed that my friend's husband was the exotic dancer. <laughs> he contacted me and said she had no clue. Should I tell her? No. <laughs> no. I, I mean, go figure, the nosy lady, but I'm saying stay. <laughs> In real life, I'm not nosy. I stay out of grown people's relationships. Exactly. Yeah. Were you thinking about telling her? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell her. How, how, how do you look? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tiff. How are you doing? Hi, Wendy. My name is Honore. How are you doing? Hi, Honore. How can I help? Well, recently I had a breakup and I've had the time of my life. I met <laughs> Yes. I met two guys on Tinder. Okay. And they're both great. I've come to find out that they work for the same company. What do I do? Do I say something or do I let it ride? Are you from a small town or something? No. How weird is that, right? They're bouncers. It's a whole they're, whatever. They're bouncers. Yeah, very quality guys. Mm. Um well, what do I do? <laughs> Um, is it a small company? Would they, they, they're, they're like at the door at a nightclub together? Yeah. Right. This is sloppy. Like, you, you, have, to, <laughs> you, you, have, you have to pick one. Have you, have you slept with both of them? No. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Um, Cut and you, run. You'll have to pick one. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's small. A club. Yeah. The door. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you have lipstick on your teeth. Mm. No, it's girls, okay. Girl. That's, what, that's what girls do for Thank each other. You. Thank you. Good luck. We have time for one more quick one, and that would be you. How you doing? My name is Norma. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Hi, Norma. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with my boyfriend for about five years now. When we're together, great time. We have no problems. When I bring him around my friends, though, and family, he doesn't talk much. And sometimes it, it makes me worry a little bit about the future. Um, should I worry about that, or should I just leave him be? 
Why are you worrying about it now? Because other people say, why doesn't your man talk? Yeah. Okay, much, so yeah. you're getting pressure from the outside world. Yeah. Because much. it's been fine with you for five years. Yeah, I don't really have a, I don't have an issue with it. It's do fine you, with me, though. Do but, you I have mean, children? Of course I, no, no okay, children. Okay, just... Of course, I do want him to be a little more friendly and yeah. talk to them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's just that he doesn't, he's not as sociable as me. You can't, you know what, and you won't be able to change him. And, you know, that thing about fixing up men and making them, you know, change how they are, that doesn't work. Just like we're not fixer-uppers either. We are who we are as women. Um, I wouldn't change him, and, and I wouldn't cave to the pressure of other people, you know. You love him, he's good for you, he's not their man, they're not the ones sleeping with him. Exactly. All right? Good luck. Thank you. Up next, everybody. The judges from the new hit court show called Hot Bench are here. Don't go far. Do you want to be my next co-host? Okay, good. Go to wendyshow.com, request your free tickets, and be a part of my studio audience. Make sure you dress to impress. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> our next guests were hand selected by our friend Judge Judy to be uh, three feisty judges on a brand new court show. It's called Hot Bench. Take a look and then I'll introduce you. I didn't give you any chronological order. Let me start me, all over, it sounded sir. To me like you sir, were. sir, if you think you're going to mince words with me and win this game, you are sorely mistaken. Sweetheart, I make over 2000 a week. Don't ever call me sweetheart. Yes, ma'am. It's not that I don't like it. I just don't like it from you. For my niece or no. Show me incident report. Do you have proof, sir? Did the police officer... You don't ask me questions I do like ask that. Questions. And you don't take that attitude. Well, then you don't take out. that attitude to me. Out. Out. The best. <laughs> Say hello to Judge Larry Backman, Judge Patricia Domingo, and Judge Tanya Acker. Nice to meet you all. And you know... And congratulations on the success of your show. You know, it's not easy. They are the number one new show on daytime TV over all the years. Yes. Good for you. So now, did you all know Judge Judy before? No. 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 Joe. She had she spied on you guys' record to find you. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm part. <laughs> yeah. So she called people that, that maybe you all know to find out about your track records? Yes. You you give me Judge Judy, all three of you, the way you you know go at your people, <laughs> you know, the, in the courtroom. We try. Yeah. So, Tanya, where are you from? L.A. L.A. I'm a native Los Angelino. Now, did you leave your judge job to do this show, or are you still a, a judge in real life? Well, what I did in real life, in my non-TV life, unlike Larry and Patricia, I really had a background in civil litigation, business litigation. Okay. I sit uh, as a judge pro tem in traffic court. Uh, which is, you know, again, very different from this. But, mm -hmm. I mean, this is just a magnificent, life-changing, fun uh, opportunity. I, it's unlike anything I've ever done before. We're yeah. having a blast. Patricia, um, are I was you... a judge in New York. You were a judge in New York. Yes. So now you had to relocate. To yes. Oh, actually, I'm bi-coastal. So I oh. live here, and then I go to L.A. and tape, and then I come back here. So I go back and forth. Oh. So I've, I have a whole new lifestyle. I've given up my judgeship. And no. I'm doing this. So you married? Do you have children? No. I, no, I'm unencumbered. Uh, so, all right, so you're free, <laughs> back and forth. But sought after. But sought yeah, after. Yeah, no, you're a hot woman, you know. Thank you. Uh, Larry, where are you from originally? I'm from Detroit. Now, so, so did you lift your life and you moved to L.A., or are you commuting back and forth as well? No, no, I, I've been in L.A. since I'm seven. Gotcha. So transplanted early. Tell me how this works. So when you guys do a ruling on your show, is that ruling binding? Or yeah, is yes. that just for TV? Yes. No, no, it's binding. It's binding. It's binding. It's binding arbitration. Same way in small claims court. Yes. When you go into small claims court, if you go to the arbitrator, uh -huh. you have to uh, sign a document saying that you understand that you cannot appeal the decision of the arbitrator. And they also understand when they come to us that they cannot appeal our decision. Huh. What I like about their show, because I love a judge show. I am like... <laughs> I, I love judge shows. And I'm judgmental. <laughs> and what I like about you guys' show is there's a different twist because you can see the three judges deliberate in the other room. Oh. And I love that. So it's majority rules? It is. Yes. Uh-huh. Now, do they gang up on you because you're the only man? I take the fifth. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Tanya, um, you're married, I see. I am. Um, your husband and your, you have children and whatnot? No, I have a dog named Max. Uh-huh. And I have a dog named Isis. Who's the real Isis? So, oh, Not so, to be confused with a terrorist group. Or, oh, or I was thinking Isis, the superhero from That was, was why girl. I named her yeah. Isis. That Almighty was my Isis, 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 yes, Isis, Isis, Isis. Isis. <laughs> That's it. 
<laughs> um, let's talk about um, celebrity legal uh, cases. Let's talk about um, Lindsay Lohan. Okay. The thing about Lindsay is that, you know, she gets in and out of trouble. She's never done any jail time. Do you feel like she needs to have done a little bit of jail time? I think if you want to send a message, you have to send it universally, regardless of whether you're a celebrity or not. And at some point, you have to step in as a judge and say, enough is enough. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Yes. This is warrants a jail sentence mm -hmm. or not. I mean, you can't treat her differently, but if it does, then in fact, you need to impose it. Do you feel that celebrities are treated differently in the, in the legal system? I hope not. I think they are at times, yeah. but, you know, every case is different. And I think a judge who is passing sentence on a celebrity is going to look at the unique characteristics of that person. Yeah. And that's what you hope for. Unique characteristics. Tanya, um, how, does the, how do you as judges look at people like Teresa, who wrote a letter to the judge on her case saying specifically that she wants to go to, like, Camp Cupcake up in, <laughs> up in Connecticut, <laughs> telling the judge this is what she wants to do. So her crisis manager, Wendy Feldman, quit after that. How do you look at that if, if, if a criminal... Yeah, I, I actually don't think it's uncommon for a criminal uh, defendant or even a civil de uh, defendant to make a plea of some sort to the judge for leniency. You know, I want to be here, I want to be there. Whether or not it's persuasive is another issue. But litigants, whether criminal or civil, constantly uh, make pleas or entreaties really? during the procedure. Sure. I had no idea this was sure. a popular thing. Well, it's not. You, you have to remember, her case was in the federal system. Yeah. So the federal judge has the prerogative of sentencing her to to really anywhere within the United States. That's really the Bureau of Prisons call. Yeah. So the judge can recommend placement out in the East Coast for her, near family, rather than putting her in Lompoc I got out in California. So it's different in a federal situation than it is in a state court situation. Well, it's really nice to meet all three of you. I like the show a whole lot. Yeah. You're going to be on TV for a long time. Be sure to watch their show. It's called Hot Bench Weekdays. Check your local listing. Eye Candy is next. <laughs> Brittany Green, Trenton, New Jersey. Whole outfit under... 100 bucks, go. Cardigan, $25. My skirt is from Garage, and it's $25. Also, my booties from Charlotte Roos, they were $15. Gorgeous. Here's your diva fan. We'll be right back. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Tomorrow, the very funny Niecy Nash. I love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. Bye.